Matthew, thir the 13th letter of Matthew. And as you're turning there, I just want to thank God for this opportunity. Thank God for salvation. Amen. Thank God for, for grace and mercy that I do not deserve. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I also want to thank our pastors. Amen. And also our, 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 our senior pastor, Pastor Al. Also Sister Regina. Thank you for this opportunity. Amen. And as you're turning to Matthew, the book of Matthew, chapter 13, how many know that we are in a series called Red Letter Living? Amen. And so I want to stay in that vein of Red, red Letter Living. And tonight's kind of, uh, you know, the subtitle for Red Letter Living is of one of the parables of Jesus, and it's Red Letter Sewing. Come on. Amen. And so I just want to kind of continue in that. In, in that mode of red letter and right here in Matthew it's called a you know I, I want to do a soil check tonight amen and I love what Pastor Aldo said the first week he said it that in the parables you got to kind of see you know see who are who are you in the parable so as we read the parable I want to kind of who are you in the parable come on amen and so Matthew chapter 13 Starting in verse 3, and it says this. It says, Then he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow, because that's what sowers do. And as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on the stony places where they did not have much earth and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth but when the sun was up they were scorched and because they had no root they withered away and also some fell thoroughly among the thorns and the thorns sprang up and choked them but others fell on good ground say good ground and yielded a crop some a hundredfold some 60, some 30. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Amen. Amen. You can have your seat. Give the Lord one more praise as you're taking your seat. And so staying in the line of red letter, you know, the, the red letter is the, the words of Jesus. And those are very important words. Of course, the whole Bible is important, but we know that the words of Christ are also as just as important and what he spoke and so this parable and the ones in this chapter deal with the kingdom of God and tonight I kind of want to teach a little bit hopefully amen and preach as well but I want us to examine ourselves as I speak or as as the word goes forth I want you to examine and take an, an evaluation of your heart Take an evaluation of where we are. It's very important to, you know, even in this season, because I know this is like, you know, the jolly season. It's the holiday season. <laughs> and we're all cheer, you know, and sometimes we don't do an evaluation of the whole year or we don't do an evaluation of how we were. And so I want to kind of take us through that this night, through this parable. And the parable of the sower shows that we are to proclaim the gospel, the, you know, the message of Jesus Christ, and to disciple to the nations. It talks about sowing seed. Jesus later even explains to his disciples the meaning of the parable and why he's doing it by quoting Isaiah. And in them, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive it, for the hearts, the hearts of this people have grown dull. Their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn so that I should heal them. And he goes to explain the parable. I don't really have to break it down for you tonight. Jesus explains it to his disciples. And he says that the sower is who? The sower is God. The sower is even him. The sower is Jesus. Jesus is the one who sows the seed. 
What is the seed? The word of God. Those two never change. The sower can never change. You know, we, can't, we can never change Jesus. We can never tell Jesus, you know, we can never change this portion and say that Jesus didn't sow the seed right or he didn't preach it right or he could have better illustrated that sermon better. But no, Jesus sows the seed. And the seed does not change. The seed is the living word of God. It's the Bible, the B-I-B-L-E, basic instructions before leaving earth. Come on. Any ex-Wu-Tang fans? Come on, amen. It's the living word. That doesn't change. We can't manipulate the word. We can't change the word. I mean, some people do. They, they don't preach the, the, the gospel. They don't preach the word. And so they change the seed. But see, the seed cannot change. So the sower can't change and the seed can't change and and the and the field is the world but the soil is our heart so it's a soil check tonight i like changing the oil in my car i used to do it a lot more often now i take it to i don't take it to jiffy lube or to the dealer i don't i go to walmart amen come on amen it's cheaper to do it there than to buy my stuff and to do it and take the time. And But how me know, man, when you change that oil, I don't know if you check your oil. You should check your oil, amen? This is a practical sermon right here, too. When you check your oil, when it's just changed, what is it? Man, that thing is clean. That oil is clear. That oil looks nice. I don't know if any mechanics in the house. Come on, amen. Can I get, can I get a witness, Amen. But when you don't change your oil and you go past 3,000, 5,000, 10,000 miles, it looks right black and, and, and muddy and, 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 and you know, it, there's deposits in there and it, it's, it's dirty and it needs to be changed. And so I, tonight I want to do a, a soil check. So check your soil. Don't check your neighbor's soil. Don't look at, 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 at their land. Don't look at them. But, but I want you to look at your soil as I look at my soil as well. Amen. See, the soil is the hearer's heart. See, the issue is the heart. There's nothing wrong with the other two. There's nothing else wrong, but the issue is the heart. I like what the Bible says about Jesus, you know, is preaching to, he's on the mountaintop in Matthew 5, and he's preaching, he's teaching, and he's sharing about, you know, you, you have heard, do not commit murder. But I tell you, I say, right, right, come on, Rabbi, Pastor Aldo, amen, right? He talked about this the first week, about all the laws that the Pharisees wrote, all the religious things that they wrote, and he says, you've heard it said, but I say, if you have anger in your heart, you have committed murder. Where? In your heart. He goes on to say, you've heard it said, do not commit adultery. Ooh, come on. But if, I, you've heard it said, but I say to you, if you look at a woman or a man with lust in your heart, you have committed adultery. Where? In your heart. So tonight, I want to kind of zone in right here because I know this all hits our heart. See, the soil is very important. There's a few things why soil is important. I, you know, I'm, I'm from, you know, central California originally, amen, and I grew up in the heartland of California and the, come on, Amen. You know, fields and fields and fields of this produce, amen? And soil is very important. You know that only 25% of the earth surface is soil, and only 10% can be used to grow food? Soil is very important. See, it is, number one, the foundation of a basic ecosystem. Out of the heart, the mouth speaks. It's the foundation, your heart. If our heart's corrupt, it speaks violence. It speaks non, it speaks evil. It speaks hate. It speaks. But if our heart 
you know, is filled with the Lord and it speaks joy, it speaks love, it speaks peace, it speaks the word. It also soils important not only because it's a foundation, it's also it filters water. Proverbs 4.23 says, guard your heart for it is the wellspring of life. See, our hearts filter things, right? We have to guard our hearts. You know, what do you take into your heart and what comes out of your heart? Yeah, it, our heart, the soil filters. It filters out the things that it doesn't need and it, and it takes in the things it does need. So it filters water. Also, soil provides essential nutrients. Number four, it regulates temperature. And number five, of course, it provides food. Galatians chapter five, right? The fruit of the spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, patience, faithfulness. It produces a fruit. As Christians, we produce something. We produce, you know, I'm not, you know, Jesus is talking about the kingdom right here, but we as Christians produce something. Are we producing in our life? Do we produce the fruit of the Holy? Do we produce the fruit of love, of joy, of peace, of patience, and of, faith, of self-control? See, these are the four soils, and their four soils are four soils and their condition. See, one out of the four carried on. Only one out of the four soils. So the other three, nothing was produced out of the four. One out of four. It's not very good odds, amen? <laughs> Come on. That's a fourth. A fourth chance. Come on. So that's why it's very important that we take in the word of God, that we come even to church as we come even early and to worship the Lord and kind of prepare our hearts for the word of God. And you're like, Lord, what do you have for me? I want to hear a word from you, God. I don't, I don't want to just come to church all mad. I want to come to church with a I want to come to church to receive. I want to receive the word of God. But we got to prepare our hearts. And so the first type is the seed that fell by the wayside. Come on. Down by the wayside. Come on, amen. See, this person hears the word, but does not understand. Or take it a step further, doesn't even care. See, they hear it, but they don't mix it with faith. See, they hear, it says they hear the word, they, but they don't understand it. See, faith comes by hearing the word and by understanding comes by the word of God. By faith. And see, when we mix faith with the word of God, when we mix faith by application, we mix faith, man, it, it, it produces something. It, you know, it's, it, we're, we're, we're doing something. See, but who steals it? The devil. The devil comes and takes it. That's the person that comes to church. There may be some people here right now with a hard heart. Man, we hear a word. Maybe even shout like, hey, amen, praise the Lord. You, you, you maybe stand up or you clap your hands or you, you get kind of involved. But as soon as you leave the house of God, as soon as you walk out the door, the enemy swoops in and takes that seed. And you start cussing. You start, you know, telling your wife off, telling your husband off. You start getting on the phone and, you know, you know at work, man, you, 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 the word was preached and it came across powerfully and, and we take it and we leave and Monday, poo, it's gone. We're out there. I was, at, I was on the work site today, man. I was installing, shh, come on, man. I was installing a data center right now. I was, in, I was at work right now, amen. I was in the field and I was all with all the construction workers and all I heard was bleepity bleep this and bleep and, Amen. I thought I saw some Christians out there. Amen. I don't know. But the enemy comes and takes the word. See, those are the people that hear the word intellectually, but not with their heart. This is the person who may come on Sunday morning, hears the word, even shouts a little bit, but they leave like they never heard the message or believed it. That's the first type. Person with the hard heart. The second is the stony place. It was said that under the soil in Israel that there was a layer of limestone, a bedrock, kind of like a rock. And where the soil was thin, 
if a seed fell, it would, it would sprout out real quickly because the moisture under that, on that rock, under the soil, caused it to spring up real quick. But when the sun came or when that water dissipated or that water disappeared, that, that, that same plant withered away. See, in that first soil, the devil took it away. With this type of soil, the flesh takes it away. Have you ever said, man, I've, have you ever said to somebody or maybe you've been a person or we've seen people, man, I've never seen, man, someone, man, just get on fire for, Lord, for the Lord so quickly. I, I, I've never seen somebody just, you know, man, you know, get involved and be excited for the Lord. And, man, they, you know, you just got saved yesterday and now you're excited for the Lord. Come on, amen. But then what happens? You know, man, they, 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 you know, they buy a new Bible. They buy some buffalo fries at the cafe. They buy a T-shirt. They, you know, they're, they go to everything. They go to five life groups. And, and then next month, they're gone. And you ask them, hey, what happened? You know what? It didn't work for me. You know what, you know, it's, it's, like, it's like a lame breakout. It's like a lame, you know, have you ever gotten broken up lame? Like, you know what? I know I probably did it, amen. <laughs> you tell, you know what? It's, it's, it's not you, it's me. <laughs> it's not you. You know, the, the worship is great. Oh, the word is great. The pastor is awesome. Man, the, man, the, the things that you guys have are, are great, but... It just is not for me. See, it's not an it. See, that's, that's the problem because it's not an it. It's not an it. It's a he. It's a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. It's a personal walk with Christ. It's not an it. It's not some kind of thing. It's, it, but it's, it's, it's a real thing. See, sometimes it says even in the word that, man, in the, in, in the stony places that they receive it, the word with joy. Sometimes joy can be deceiving. You know, man, you know, a newcomer, bam, they have the joy. You know, the joy of the Lord. Amen. That's what they call me sometimes, Pastor Joy. Amen. I don't know. And then I smile as I preach the word. I don't know. Amen. But, but the joy, and sometimes the joy is, is, is deceptive. And they receive the word with joy or gladness, but because they have no roots, they wither away. That's the key is getting roots. As soon as you get saved, as soon as you start serving the Lord, as soon as you're in the home or you're in the discipleship, you get roots in the house of God. We got to get roots. But how do roots take place? Roots come only by what the storms, the trials the challenges in life, because when a tree is moved around, it begins to go deeper into the soil. It begins to go deeper into the house of God. We got to be men. We got to be women. We got to be Christians that go deep when things come our way. It may not all be peaches and cream, baby, but we have to go deep with God. We got to go deep. You know, man, they're all happy serving the Lord. Man, we could be all be joyful serving the Lord, but, some, but tragedy hits or something that we weren't expecting hits. See, this is teaching because it's not going to be if it happens. It's going to be when it happens. And so I might as well tell you the truth. Things are going to happen. But see, it's going to take people with roots to go deep with the Lord, to go deep with Jesus, to go deep in discipleship, to go deep with God. To hang on, amen. See, to hang on to the Lord. We need to hang on to God. We need to hang on to the Holy. We need to hang on. Don't give up. It's getting roots. Roots come through storms and persecutions and trials, but it also comes through discipleship. It also comes through iron sharpens iron with people telling you stuff. Come on, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to, man, don't, don't, don't be preaching that. But I want to hear, man, Tell me what I'm doing. Tell me. Show me so I could change. See, don't, you know, man, sometimes we use people that are excited right away. And they get burned out because they have no root. Come on, amen. You know, it's not, you know, it's, 
You know, let me, let me tell you, let me tell you this, is that even before I got married, I got saved and I got married, not right away, amen. I got saved, I started, you know, courting my wife or dating my wife. And I want to share this with you too, is that you got to see people through seasons. You don't get married right away because they're, oh, they're, they're saved. Well, that's great, they're saved. But how long have they been saved? How many seasons have they? I wanted to make sure my wife been through some trials. I want to make my wife, man, been through some things because when she, how she handles trials, and I'm pretty sure she was looking at me, how I go through things and how I handle trials and how I handle stress and how we go through things, I'm pretty sure she was watching too because she didn't want a, 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 a guy you know, that wasn't seasoned, that was, hadn't gone through nothing. If you, if you want to get married to somebody, man, make sure they went through some things. Make sure they built some things. Make sure that they go to church, amen. Come on, amen. Get discipled, amen. See, how do we handle those difficult situations? That's the stony places. How do you handle that? It takes roots. Maybe tonight we, some of us need roots. You know, you've been coming for a while. We need some roots. Take roots. You're going through some things right now. I can see some of you guys are going through some things. But see, that's taking root in your life. So we go deeper with the Lord. We go deeper with Christ. We go deeper into the word of God. Amen. And, that, and the third type of soil is the thorns. See, the first, the devil took it. Second, the flesh took it. This type, the world crowds out. The world comes in and crowds out that good word, that good seed. See, the thorns choke the word out. The worries, worries of riches, obsession with appearance, with the worldly things. It's difficult to minister to those on both extremes, those who are extremely poor and to those that are extremely rich. Because one worries about money because they don't, have, they don't have much, and the other, they have it all, and so they don't need God. But see, that person, that stony ground, you know, that seed that was, that was sown there, you know, it didn't happen right away. Because the seed was sown, and it grew up with the reeds. It doesn't happen overnight. We don't, we don't lose heart after, you know, overnight. We don't, you know, it says that we, we grow dull after use. It, it doesn't happen overnight, you know, it, but it takes, you know, no, I'm going to miss, I'm going to miss church tonight. You know, I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to pray today. I'm going to miss my devotion. I'm not going to, I'm going to miss my time with the Lord. I'm going to, I'm going to miss. And it begins to, you know what? And I'm going to, I'm going to work more at work. You know, I need, I need more money. You know, the Lord saved me. I'm cleaned up now. Now I need, some, I need, I need, I need some more stuff. Amen. I need, I need to be like the Joneses. I, you know what? Now I have a sober mind. Now I have a clean mind. Now I'm in my right mind, and now I want to get all this kind of stuff. No, let, let, let me put everything else on the sideline. The, the, the God who saved me, Jesus Christ who raised me, I'm going to put all that on the side. I'm going I'm to pursue this now because now I'm clean. Now I'm okay. Now I'm right. Now I know, I know, I know how to rule my own life. And those things are what chokes. It says the thorns or the weeds choke the word. But see, we don't need to have things and, 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 and you know, and we don't need things to choke out the good word in our life. But we need to get on our knees again. We need to pray and to choke the worries out of our life. We to get on our knees and to pray and to seek the Lord and to seek his face and to choke those things instead of worrying about what we don't have. Amen. Give the Lord a praise. Amen. See, it's well tonight to examine our hearts, to examine our commitments. Even as we start this new year, to start on the right track with the right heart. The last thing is this, as I get ready to close, amen, is number four, the good ground. The good ground, amen. The good ground. It says that it produced a hundred Fold, 60-fold, 30-fold, according to Matthew's gospel. See, Matthew was considered the Matthew, or he, they, Matthew saw Jesus as the king. He saw Jesus as the king, and, it went, and the only way a king 
A king started high. A king starts at the top. The king is the top. And so it went from 100 to 60 to 30. Only way a king could come down is being humbled. And so Matthew's gospel has it declining. In Luke 8, 4, he writes only about the hundredfold. See, Luke portrayed Christ as the God-man, as, as the perfect, as, you know, as he was 100, amen. Come on, you know, what's that little emoji? 100 emoji, amen. He was 100, that's it, complete. Mark, on the other hand, saw Jesus as the, the servant, the servant God. And he even does it reverse order. So he goes from 30-fold to 60-fold to 100-fold. So there's, a, a, there's an increase because Mark is the servant, says Jesus is a servant. Now, interesting, now, I, I don't want to, I want to kind of share a few things as we go to, come to close what 30, 60, and 100 mean. Now, 30, 60, and 100 doesn't mean, you know, 30 is an okay Christian and 60 is a good Christian and, and 100 is the perfect Christian. No. You know, I, I, I'm 100 all the time, baby. Come on, amen. 100. That's great, amen. Praise the Lord. I want to kind of show what these could mean, amen, or what could mean to our hearts. So the number 30 in the Bible represents dedication to authority, leadership, or a particular task. So, you know, it's not that you, you know, he sows and you get more. No, oh, I only got 30 this time. I only got 60 this time. No, when it sows, it produces the fruit. And so when we sow into our hearts, when we take care of the condition of our heart, when we trust the Lord, it's like, hey, you know what? Man, we begin to come under authority. We begin to, man, you know, you know God has called us to a certain task. And that's the, what 34 means. A 30, a 30 times. 60 in the Bible, it has the idea of help or support or being upheld. And the number 100 in the Bible means promise or an idea of, of completeness. Promise. See, when Jesus spoke these, this parable, no one in Israel ever got 30, 60, or 100 fold. They, man, they put out more seed than that. And those results excited the hearer of the word said, man, if Jesus, I can get with him, I can get 30, 60, 100 fold, and I'm only getting 10, 15, 20. Man, what is, what is he talking about? See, he's not talking about a physical. He's talking about spiritual. He's talking about the spiritual realm, the kingdom of God. And we, as we trust the Lord, it's not that we get more leadership or rulership. No, it's that, man, we bear that fruit of leadership, of knowing that he helps us, of knowing that he strengthens us. Also, that know he has given us a promise and a purpose that he has called us. <laughs> Finally, Jesus even says, whoever hears these words of mine and does them is like a person who builds their house on the rock. Are we hearing the word? We're hearing the word, amen? But are we understanding it? We bring some understanding tonight about the soil, about the condition of our heart. And it is our, as we get ready to close, you know, I want us to take an evaluation of our hearts tonight of, to check our soil. You know, because sometimes, even in the, in the season, we're going to allow our hearts and I, it's even happened to mine, it gets a little thorny. I start worrying about, you know, because I, I, ne I neglect a f a, the important things and I start worrying. I start getting stressed out at work. I need to make more money. I need to pay this bill. I need, I need and we start stressing. And, and, and what happens is that all that stress and all that worry causes our hearts and that word that, man, we heard on Sunday, that word we heard, even, even as we read the Bible, as we, as we, it begins to get choked out. It begins to, to die because we're not feeding it. We have to feed our faith. We have to feed the soil. We have to allow the, the word of God to, allow, to land on that good ground. Is our heart good ground this evening? And as we all stand in this place and we take an evaluation you decide. Tell your neighbor, you decide how you will respond to God. 
You, we decide. God, am I going to receive your word? Is it going to fall on a hard heart? Is it going to fall on a, a shallow heart? When that is it, we're, I'm just a surface Christian. You know, I just, I, just, I just show face. I just please people, you know. But when the hard times come, I go running. Or the, the, the thorns, we're all worried right now. We're trying to, how are we going to meet, how are we going to meet this bill? How are we going to, when before we had nothing. And we had nothing. I came here with nothing. I didn't come here with my car. I didn't come here with my condo. I, I didn't come here with nothing. My kids, I didn't, I didn't have nothing. And now I'm complaining I don't have enough. I'm letting the world choke. The worldly influences trying to, you know, get likes on my phone. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm obsessed with Facebook. I'm obs obsessed with social media. The, it's choking my prayer time when I should be spending time with the Lord. I'm on my phone. It's choking me out. But then there's that good ground. 30, 60, 100, 40. Doesn't mean one is better than the other. Doesn't mean that at all. It just means this, is that fruitfulness doesn't come by sowing seed. Fruitfulness comes by the condition of our heart. And so tonight, as we kind of take evaluation, say, you know what, I need to check my soil. I need to check where I'm at. I, I need to check where I'm at too. And so as we close our eyes and we prepare our hearts, as we lift our hands, as we ask God to do a work in our hearts, for what he has for us, the great things he has for us. Don't grow weary in due season, for indeed you reap a harvest if you don't give up. Don't give up. Even if you have a hard heart, you feel like it. Don't give up. If you feel like, man, I have a surface relationship with Christ, don't give up. But prepare. If you feel like, man, that things are choking the life out of you, don't give up. But also for those that have the good ground. Say, no, I want that 30-fold. I want that leadership. I want that 60-fold. I want, I want that 100-fold. I want that promise. If that's you tonight, as they prepare a song, if this message has ministered to you, because I know I'm ministered to myself. If that's you this evening, say, you know what? That touched my heart. I want you to... Make your way up to this altar and prepare your heart. Say, God, work on my soul.